This section should give a short introduction to the skeleton, muscles, respiration, blood and circulation, and the nervous system. The skeleton is the framework of the human body. All organs are directly or indirectly connected to the skeleton. The skeleton consists of about 200 bones, the largest being the thigh bone and the smallest those in the middle ear. The bones are connected to each other with different types of joints. The most flexible ones are the ball and socket joints, which we have in our hips and shoulders. All flexible joints are in capsules, which allow free movement in any direction. The tendons attach the skeletal muscles to the skeleton. These muscles bring about movement of the skeleton. Muscles cause the various parts of the body to move. Skeletal muscles are controlled by will. They are attached to the bones by bands of strong fibrous tissue and operate in groups. As one group of muscles contracts, its paired group relaxes. Muscles also work constantly to maintain the position or stability of the body. Smooth involuntary muscles operate the internal organs, such as the heart. And work constantly, even when we are asleep. They are controlled by the autonomic nervous system. To provide oxygen to the blood, we have a respiratory system consisting of lungs. Upper and lower airways and capillaries around the alveoli. Respiration is controlled by areas of the brain responding mainly to blood levels of carbon dioxide, acid, and oxygen. These neurochemical networks bring about contraction of the diaphragm muscles and other muscles located in the ribs. Respiration is only partly under voluntary control. When we breathe out, the diaphragm and rib intercostal muscles relax. The rib cage moves downwards and inwards, and the tissues of the lungs become compressed, thus pushing air out of the lungs. When we breathe in, the chest muscles pull the ribs up and out, causing the chest to expand in width and height. The diaphragm flattens and the rib cage moves upwards and outwards. The chest cavity is enlarged, reducing air pressure in the lungs. Air is then sucked into the lungs. The upper airways consist of the mouth, nose, and throat. To assure normal breathing, these airways must be open. The lower airways consist of trachea, bronchia, and alveoli in the lungs. The alveoli is where the oxygen is picked up by the blood in exchange for carbon dioxide. The alveoli are the terminal part of the lower airways. The total area of the gaseous exchange surface is some 100 square meters.
In order to supply the body with energy, we have a circulation system with blood and a pump, the heart. The main purpose of the blood is to carry the oxygen from the lungs and nourishment from the digestive system and body stores to the body's cellular system. The blood also carries the body waste away from the cells. The blood consists of plasma, red and white blood cells, platelets and proteins. The red blood cells transport the oxygen and carbon dioxide. White blood cells help fight infection. The heart pumps and circulates approximately five liters of blood through the heart per minute, uninterrupted throughout a lifetime. The approximate size of an adult person's heart is about the size of a closed fist. The heart muscle contracts, forcing blood into the blood vessels and, when the muscle relaxes, replacement blood pours into its collecting chambers. The frequency of the heartbeat is controlled in part by the brain. The heart also has its own pacemaker cells and electrical conducting cells. Arteries carry the blood away from the heart. They are the strongest of the blood vessels and their walls contain elastic and muscular tissue. The blood in the arteries is bright red in color and rich in oxygen. Veins carry the blood back to the heart. This blood is much darker than the blood in the arteries. Approximately 65% of the blood is in the veins at all times. The veins have a one-way valve, which helps to control the flow of blood back to the heart. Capillaries connect the arteries and the veins. They are microscopic blood vessels through which the exchange of fluids and gases to and from the tissue cells of the body can be made. The nervous system in the body is divided into the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is that part of the nervous system that consists of the brain and spinal cord. The central nervous system is a type of information superhighway where all the nerve impulses pass and are registered. Therefore, injuries to the central nervous system can be life-threatening and must be taken seriously. The peripheral nervous system connects the central nervous system to muscles, blood vessels and glands, sensory organs and other organs of the body. The peripheral nerves include the cranial nerves, the spinal nerves and roots, the autonomic nerves that control the regulation of the heart muscle, the blood vessel muscles and some glands. These nerves form part of the central and peripheral nervous system. Damage to the peripheral nervous system can result in a reduced ability to feel pain and, in worst case, paralysis. The brain is the most important organ in the body and controls almost all the functions and reactions in the organism. It produces the consciousness we depend on to function as a human being. The brain consists of support cells and nerve cells that have a high energy consumption. Unlike many other cell types in the body, nerve cells do not divide in the adult, and therefore the brain has a very limited ability to regenerate after injury. In addition, both types of cells are very dependent on a constant and even flow of oxygen, and are very vulnerable and fragile if this should be interrupted or stopped. Nerve cells and glia cells start to die after only four to six minutes without an oxygen supply.
nerves and the spinal cord together compose a comprehensive network that registers all input to the body and conveys the information to the brain. Commands from the brain to the body are also relayed through this system. There are different types of sensors that, for instance, register temperature, pressure and chemical changes. If we get burned, the sensors will register a temperature change and electrical signals are sent to the spinal cord at speeds of around 60 meters per second. A reflex action occurs. Most reflexes do not travel to the brain to be processed, so they are very fast. A reflex action involves a simple nervous pathway, and a signal is sent from the spinal cord to the peripheral muscle, making it contract and move the burned limb away from the heat source.